Hi everyone, I am going to give a tour of all the different soil mixes and medias and amendments that we use at the uh, conservatory, UC Davis Botanical Conservatory. So we are in our workroom and I am standing in front of, no, not a whole bunch of uh, different dog foods, but this is a great way that we actually store uh, our materials that we don't have a lot of, but we definitely use um, throughout our repotting. So I'm just going to go through real quick and explain because we have them labeled and some people are like, what the heck is that? Okay, so for the first one, uh, small orchid bark. So orchid bark comes in different sizes. This is pretty small. Now remember, never use a uh, bark that you, for landscaping, buy it from an orchid supplier. Uh, so this is very small and it's nice, uh, and a good quality. All right, next. Okay, peanuts. People are like, why do you have peanuts? Well, they are actually, packaging peanuts, or as um, one of our student workers says, they're called ghost poop. So yeah, uh, what we use these for is at the bottom of our orchid pots, mainly when the bark, if we don't get to transplanting them, the bark will eventually break down. And of course, orchids like a nice airy environment. This won't break down. So remember, don't use the cornstarch ones. So sometimes when we get a bag of them, I go, oh, that's definitely not gonna break down. So just sort of a layer. We also use them to fill up extra space in a pot. If we have a, a pot that um, is too big for the root ball, but you know we like the width of the pot, but the depth is too much, we'll backfill into that because they won't break down. All right, perlite. Most people know perlite. It's that white crunchy stuff that comes in your potting soil. Um, it's good for aeration. It does hold some water. It is a volcanic glass, so never use, use it while it's dry because you don't want to breathe it in. It comes in different sizes. This is actually a small size. So we add it to different mixes, even our, our bark, um, to create more of sort of a, a water holding um, capabilities in our orchid mix. All right, profile. So this is small profile. We have three different sizes. It's basically a, a clay material. Uh, they use it in uh, like baseball fields, but now it's gaining momentum in the nursery industry. You could start seeding seedlings in this, cuttings. I think they use it in um, water plants as well. Has a lot of different um, applications. So we just actually have three different sizes here. All right, sphagnum. We use a lot of this. Um, I know people use coconut coir and it's supposed to be a little more sustainable. We, we don't waste this at all, um, but you can't really beat this for our nepenthes, um, certain orchids. It, uh, we keep it wet in here because it's really hard to wet. And, you know, we just want to make sure if a student's grabbing it and potting it that it's already moist. Um, so yeah, it's just used to hold a lot of moisture. Sometimes we make it, mix it with the orchid bark. And let's see, vermiculite right here. It's pretty much an expanded mica, I believe. It's all shimmery, so pretty. Uh, you could use this as a top dressing for seedlings. We mix it with perlite to get our uh, cutting mix. Holds a little bit of moisture. And the bottom row, let's see, this one's not labeled, but I remember it being tree fern fiber. Right there. So there's tree ferns, this is the trunk, this is the fiber. It really just allows aeration in whatever soil mix you're making up. We got medium orchid bark I won't show you. It's just a little bit bigger than the small. And then here, it's not cocoa puffs, but when I see it, I want cocoa puffs. This is expanded shell, or also known as hydrotone. It is an expanded clay. Uh, a lot of hydroponics are using this. Um, you could plant bromeliads directly into it, orchids directly into it, anything that needs some water holding capabilities, but a lot of aeration. And our last one over here is oyster shell. We don't use a lot of this because oyster shell increases calcium. And we don't have a problem with that because we sort of have a very good balanced fertilizer and it can up your pH a tiny bit. What, why we have this is we uh, dress on top of our um, certain orchids to get a little bit of calcium because if they're in bark, they're not really getting that much calcium. So we're gonna move over. So that's some of our uh, mixes that we don't use necessarily tons of. I'll show you what we use in bulk, which is over here. So our succulent mix. 
And even though it's succulent mix, we use it on, I would say, 85% of our plants. And I just made that number up, <laughs> but it sounds pretty good. Uh, we have this made and then we autoclave it to kill weed seeds. It's almost 60% inorganic material. Of course, that looks like an old uh, oak acorn there. So we have red lava, sand, and then we do have redwood compost in it. Um, and we use this for a lot. We'd rather err on the side of having to water more and have our plants not drowned by overwatering. And next to it is our carnivorous plant mix. We cover them so when people are working, you soil doesn't fall in there and contaminate. Uh, this is our carnivorous plant mix. It's equal parts horticultural sand, perlite, and uh, peat moss with no fertilizer. And our carnivorous plants for the most part, except for nepenthes that grow in sphagnum are in here. This is also great for ferns and things that like acid conditions and need a little bit more water holding uh, capabilities. For my potting soil at home, I take our succulent mix, mix a little bit of this into it. All right, real quick over here, we have more orchid bark. And then here we have pumice. Pumice is also a volcanic rock. And we used to have this in our succulent mix, but we couldn't get the quantity. So that's why we moved to the red lava. But we start our succulent cuttings in this and we will add this um, to a soil that we want to drain even faster. All right, VP mix, very important. Very, very important mix. This is what we start most of our cuttings in. It's a 50-50 mix of uh, perlite and vermiculite. And that's what I use at home as well. It's my favorite. All right, in this bag, it needs its own, its own little storage container. Is our red lava rock. We'll also start uh, cuttings in this as well. Succulent cuttings, I should say. Things that like to be dry while they're rooting. And seed starting mix, which is basically sunshine mix one. And basically it's a, it's a, a peat. So we start seeds in that. And then we could top, top dress it with vermiculite, sand sometimes. And then over here, sort of the hodgepodge of when people are transplanting their, their plants or their little uh, uh, plants that they sort of have adapted or adopted, I should say here, so we've got weird things. This is succulent mix with Osmico. This one here is a pinguicula mix. Two washed turface to two perlite, one washed lava rock, one sand, and one vermiculite. So that's our pinguicula, which is a carnivorous plant mix. Who's ever doing that? I like that they are uh, labeling it though. So hopefully that just gives you an idea of, you know, all the different planting medias that's out there and that you could purchase to build up your own potting soil and have fun with soil.